Hi, my name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Tempe, Arizona. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is fun because we, we have this mini studio that's set up in the practice to do our podcast. And one of the things I always wanted to do was when I walk out of an appointment from a patient, it would give me an opportunity to kind of, maybe I had a realization in there or I had something that I thought I realized in the room with this patient that if I were to be able to share this with someone else, it would help them. So the goal of having these little little snippets or these little tiny little videos would be like uh, when a physician walks out of a room or a physician has a certain moment where they realize something within the day that could be helpful to share with other patients, we would make little videos like this and release it. So this is the first one we're making. One of the things I deal with that's so important is cholesterol. And it is such an important part of your health is understanding cholesterol and, and blood lipids as they are termed. And I'm not going to go too deep, but I just want to say this with you. Think on this. There is a population of people on the internet who are very much against statin drugs. And this is not new. This has been around for a long time. I remember, you know, 2010, a dear, dear friend of mine was very much anti-statin as well. This is early internet, so he didn't get this information from the internet, I don't think, but had high cholesterol and chose not to manage he was a friend of mine uh, before medicine. I knew him for a long time prior to, to becoming a physician. Anyway, he passed. He had a heart attack. And um, the dear person, why I'm saying this is because the consequences of not addressing cholesterol can be dire. And he too was of the mindset that cholesterol is part of your life and you're supposed to have it and you shouldn't get rid of it. That was his mindset. And, and the thing is, is that's not quite correct. Let me be clear with you on this. You need cholesterol. That is an absolute vital part of you. Cholesterol is the building blocks of all of your hormones and neurosteroids. You need this. Cholesterol is an essential part of life. It's not the problem of having cholesterol that's the issue. It's too much cholesterol. And I use this example. I did that today with a patient. I was thinking this is a good thing to share, and this is the nuts and bolts of what I wanted to share today. If you had type 2 diabetes and your type 2 diabetes came from a diet. You're, just, you're eating a certain diet that's not the best diet. Your blood sugar levels were allowed to go too high for too long. And because of that, your hemoglobin A1C now is very high. And, and your blood sugar being elevated is causing health conditions, health problems. We'd want to bring your glucose down. Whichever way I could, what would blood sugar be a problem? When blood sugar is very high, when the hemoglobin A1C is high, what does that mean? If you were to go in and you were to biopsy a part of your body and you're to search the outside of the cells and see how much sugar is added to the outside of the cells, that glycosylated component, that's where you're measuring sugar. So the hemoglobin A1C is my way of measuring how much sugar is crusting out of the outside of your red blood cells. And so that's how you measure this. And now if there's too much sugar crusting on the outside of those red blood cells, red blood cells don't do a very good job anymore. They become sticky and they don't transfer oxygen as well as they should. Further, like I said, if you were to take a person who has a high hemoglobin A1C, high blood sugar, and you were to biopsy in their neurons, biopsy their liver, their heart, their brain, you would see that there's too much sugar on those cells. White blood cells don't do their job the way they should. Neurons don't transmit information as well as they should. Kidney cells don't work the way they should. The filtration doesn't work right. You need sugar. It's part of being alive. I don't want to bring your sugar to zero, but I need to keep it in this range. We all know that type 2 diabetes can be managed with diet. That is a good tool, and it works. Not every single time. Some people have irregularities that you have to do other things with them. I know this to be true. But the majority of people with type 2 diabetes, we could do great work with you with diet. Great work with you. Say your hemoglobin A1C is like 10 or 11, and it should be 5.1, 5.2. It's very hard to bring it down there. I would want to bring your A1C down quicker than just with diet or even better. You come into my office and you have a high hemoglobin A1C and I sit down with you like, let's do this diet to fix it. It's very difficult to onboard an effective diet. 
It's difficult for someone to change their lives. I know this. And it's a tall order for me as a physician to say, you're eating this way, you're going to eat this way tomorrow, you're going to do this for the rest of your life. We all live in this world together. We know how hard that is. The person that can make that switch, that person doesn't have type 2 diabetes because they already live that lifestyle. The people with type 2 diabetes have not made that switch. My job as a physician to help them make that switch over. We really get to cholesterol. I haven't forgotten it. Bear with me. When their hemoglobin A1C is elevated and their neurons are not working correctly or their white blood cells are not working correctly, they get an infection on their foot. This is how people start having foot problems and sometimes you lose toes, sometimes you lose a foot. This is how this happens. As a physician, it would be um, horrible for me to say, well, the only way it's going to be fixed is with diet. If you don't do the diet I'm telling you, you're in trouble. It's not going to work. Too bad. I'm not going to prescribe you medication. That would be bad medicine. So I write the medication I know to stabilize you, to make you safe while I work with your lifestyle. Because just because you haven't been able to change your lifestyle fast enough doesn't mean you should suffer. Doesn't mean you should go through a lifetime of harm. It's like that with cholesterol. If you present to clinic with your LDL cholesterol elevated and you have risk factors and it's high, I want to bring it down. And I'm the kind of doctor that wants to use lifestyle and diet. Fiber is beautiful for this. Diet is good for this. I want to do my best work with you. But if it's so high that it creates a cardiac risk, I'm not being a good doctor if I don't prescribe something that'll bring it down to make you safe. We want your cholesterol down to a level where it's not going to cause harm so that we can let the diet do its job. You need cholesterol, as I mentioned, for all your neurosteroids, all your body hormones. You need it for so many things. It's a beautiful thing. You need it. So you don't want to go to zero. But like glucose, you don't want it too high either. The people on the internet with their books and their websites and their podcasts will not be in the room with you when it goes wrong. They won't be in the room with you when it goes wrong. When you have a heart attack, will the person who wrote that blog post or, or, or that Instagram story or whatever it is that we saw, will they be in the room with you? No, they won't. And they won't take responsibility for this either. You don't want to learn the lesson then. I'm, I'm, I'm coming from my heart with this. I really am because I want the best for all of my patients. And I don't want to write a statin if I don't need to. But I want you to live. I don't want you to have the chance to change and lead a healthier lifestyle so you don't need a medication. And if you need a medication due to you have a genetic predisposition, there's many reasons why some people need to be on a statin. I know this to be true. Then I will do everything in my power to make sure you take the least amount of statin to get the most amount of effect because we're doing lifestyle and diet. And if you're taking a statin, we're going to prescribe you coenzyme Q10 because part of the side effects of statins are is it depletes your body's ability to make coenzyme Q10. You need it. It's not just a supplement you buy at the health food store. Coenzyme Q10 is an important part of your mitochondrial's output of energy. It's essential. And without it, you're not healthy. Whenever I write someone a statin, I run their coenzyme Q10 lab. I test how high it is. And I make sure I keep it at the high end of the range. You deserve that kind of care. I hope this helps. And I know it's going to trigger people to get mad and say statins are evil and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to preach the pharmaceutical industry's story. And to be honest with you guys, I, I don't write pharmaceuticals. I write like a, a, a generic on this guy. This is not some company making all this money. It's generic. This is, not, this is not some conspiracy here. This is just a doctor in a room with a patient trying to do the right thing. So I know people will be triggered, but I, but I hope this reaches the people who are confused. And I hope this helps you. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you around the clinic.